So, you want to go camping, but you want to keep all your tech fully charged with a folding solar panel. And this one came from eBay. Uh, before I even open it, this is the picture on the eBay listing showing four panels, one end to the other absolutely full of big slabs of silicon. And I thought, well, that's quite good. So then it arrived, and you can tell from my tone of voice that I was not pleased by the amount of silicon there was because there was half as much silicon as shown in the listing and I uh, did a quick test and then a contact and said this is not as described and they said do you want to do the return process and then the seller uh, said do you want a 30% disc refund and uh, to keep it and I said just thought oh screw it yes I'll take the 30% refund and then we'll open it up and we'll see what's inside. So in the peak of summer last year, because I got this in winter and it's not a great time to test it. In the peak of summer last year, June, I went outside and pointed it directly at the sun on an absolutely scorching hot day at noon. It was like the peak of the sun for the day, aimed it directly at the sun and uh, tested it with a USB monitor and a variable load. Uh, cue the variable load. A variable load like this that you can just basically adjust it up and down and uh, the results were that on the brightest day pointed directly at the Sun the best conditions possible it cut out at 500 milliamps so not 10 watts 2.5 watts but these are also sold by similar sellers as 20 watts and even 80 watts they're just lying through their teeth about the power rating so I'm kind of interested to see what's inside. So I think we should uh, open this module in the back. I'm not even sure how this bit opens. Let's uh, just cut it open, in fact. I'm guessing that these have a uh, wire going along. I can feel a bit of wire here. Where is a pair of scissors? Let's just do something absolutely terrible here. Let's cut the solar panel in half. Right. Are there even any wires? Maybe the rest are fake or pads. No, there's a there's a met, little metal tab there, and probably one at the other end as well. Maybe yes, there is one at the other end. Okay, so that's those tabs, and we'll cut this one off. Sacrilege! But to be honest, if you're going camping, you'd have to know that this would only this would work with Android phones because. Many Android phones will just adjust to whatever current your charging device can supply. They won't just say, no, I'm not going to charge. Apple, I'm not so sure about. Let's see if I can get in here. Here is a knith. Let's try and make a little incision in this. Like that. More sacrilege. But for an Apple device or others, you may need to... Uh, Improvise, you may have to charge a power bank, but do be aware that you're not getting what they claim. Okay. Oh, this is kind of, this is strange. Righty ho. So this little unit, I didn't expect that. It's actually got the screws in the back for opening it. That's handy. And we'll take a look at the construction of the solar panel here. It's kind of laid into a clear plastic and then they've sewn directly into the plastic here for the solar panel. What's this for? Or is that glue or do they just squish the whole lot down on top of it? Interesting. Right, tell you what. Let's open this. We shall get the screwdriver into it. Phil's screwdriver made for me by a friend called Phil. He turned it in brass. It's very nice. Not suitable for poking into live electrical connections, but none of my screwdrivers usually are, except the VDE ones. Now comes this. There's the little circuit board, right? Okay, we shall explore this. It looks like a buck regulator, maybe. I'm guessing. And uh, I'll also take this apart. Let's do that. One moment, please. Reverse engineering is complete. Let's explore. Let's take a look at the solar panels first. It's based on what looks like a fiberglass laminate with the sections of solar panel put onto it. The terminals, the strip brought through the ends, and then the front has been laminated on, and it's a very soft plastic, the translucent surface in the front that 
spills over the edge and you can see a slight creepage under here and it's been uh, bonded in such a way that it's thicker at the edge and then they've sewn through it to actually attach it to the fabric of the case. It's neat enough. The circuit board has a very simple layout. It's a dual purpose. Let me zoom down this. Bit too much, bit too much again, bit too much. Uh, about there, about there. Is that all right? No, let's go out again. Let's just do terrible zooms. The supply actually comes on the bottom as a positive and negative in. The reason it's got output terminals here is that there is an option with this thing, presumably, of just not putting any circuitry on here and simply having the input from the solar panels going via this short key diode to that output. So that is presumably just a little jack connector going out with just unregulated voltage and, and nothing else would be populated. Or potentially, maybe it would be populated and it just gives an option of an unregulated output. But the input comes, there is a capacitor here, there's a little dedicated NS6322B chip and that is a, a simple buck regulator that can handle from about 4 volts upwards to about 30 volts I think. Um, and that uses this little inductor here to regulate the voltage uh, by buck regulation and smooth this capacitor and then put it out to the USB connector. Very little in the way of components. There's just an LED and a resistor with an option for a surface mount LED if they want to use a different configuration. It's fairly universal. Likewise, the two electrolytics here have options to have onboard uh, ceramic capacitors instead, but in this instance they've chosen the electrolytics, possibly for cost reasons. Let me show you the schematic. Oh, just for reference, there's the circuit board. Here it is blown up for full scale. There is one oddity in the back of this. It's a very tiny track that actually goes from the uh, other side of the inductor to the main switching line. That's quite odd they've done that. Here is the schematic. It's not terribly complex because there are so few components. We've got the four solar panels wired in parallel and they're putting out, say, 5.5 to 6 volts each. There are... 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 sections. Usually it's about half a volt a section, so that would give around about 5.5 to 6 volts. There's the output via the Schottky diode. There's the 22 microfarad 25 volt capacitor. The one chip that does it all with its inductor, uh, the output capacitor 10 volts, 100 microfarad, and then the red LED and its 1K resistor, and then the output. The data pins of the USB connector are just tied together to signal that it is a fairly generic low current device. But that is it. It's deceptive. Uh, it would be annoying if you went out with one of those with the false claims of its output and uh, then found when you were out camping that you ran out of juice. Um, so these things are being sold under very misleading listings online. So just be aware of this. And also, they won't even, even if they were rated for their output that they state, the reality is that that would have to be in pointing at the sunshine in absolutely direct sunlight, particularly in the UK where we don't get a huge amount of sunlight in the summer. So you'd really want to maybe go for a bigger panel uh, and a power bank just to store whatever energy you could harvest. But there we have it. The um, camping fold-out solar panel phone charger, it's perhaps to be treated with caution but still a useful device and certainly worth taking apart for the bits.